What are you building? <laughs> what a great question. The theory on the plan is marvellous, but there's always the reality on the ground. When, uh, Wapa, I, you know, obviously there's a language barrier. Stupido! At least I know stupid in Spanish. It doesn't have a great chance of succeeding. Hi, it's Jenny. I'm here in the front of my property, the Grand Design House, Casa La Pedrera. And I've just been reviewing the start of the introduction to the Grand Designs program. And honestly, that made me giggle. It really did. Firstly, to be young again. And secondly, I really made myself look, well, shall we put it um, kindly, not very intelligent when I thought I was saying stupid correctly in Spanish where in fact I wasn't in any event and no I wasn't calling the builder stupid I was calling my husband stupid yeah I, I'm the only one who's allowed to do that by the way but yeah uh, come and join us in the journey and uh, we'll make a few comments along the way enjoy most people move to Spain for sun sea and sangria but the real excitement of another country is its culture to move your family over is a great opportunity, but a huge upheaval. To do this and build a house is madness. I'm in Ali Canty, and I'm on my way to meet a couple who've been brave enough to move here with two children and a newborn baby to a remote spot just south of here. And boy, are they taking some risks. They're sinking all their money and all their hopes in the ultimate family home but they've still got a business to sell back in the UK. And for the moment, they're going to be living 20 minutes away from their site in a caravan park. Hello? Hello? Hello. Have I come to the right place? You have. Hi there. How are you? I'm very well. Pleased to see you. Hi, Derek. How are you doing? Okay. How are you? Good. How are you? How are you? It's my daughter, Hi. Jenna. Hi. Jenna. I'm Jenna, how are you? Kevin. This is Eden. Eden. Hi, Eden. How are you? Just little one. I can tell from your accent that neither of you were originally from the UK. We were originally from South Africa, but we came to the UK and been there 10 years, and now we try. We want to get back to some warm sunshine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're yeah. going to stay in the, in the yeah. caravan for the duration of the world? That's right. Yeah. 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 So how's it going here? It's all right. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. I mean, it's obviously not ideal, but it will do until we go into our new home. So I'm just pausing right there because that really brings back some memories. That caravan park was awful. I was alone initially with a newborn baby and our caravans were so close together. I had someone pushed up against my window, honestly, a size five shoe, that was the gap between them. So I could never let Lindsay cry because obviously the next um, caravan would hear everything. Also, the owner was an absolute maniac. He used to drive his quad bike around and he used to drive them into mobile homes that he was having issues with. He would turf people off the site. Uh, yeah, he even squared up to me once when I asked him to turn the music down after stupid o'clock. They were playing in the morning and the kids had to go to school the next day. But yeah, not a great introduction to our life in Spain. Moving swiftly on, however. The caravan park is half an hour south of Alicante. Where Derek and Jenna building is further inland, near Orihuela. They've been lucky enough to find a hidden plot of land in a conservation area. Oh, wow. Which looks out over a beautiful man-made reservoir. Oh, God. What a place! It's beautiful, isn't it? What a place! Come on, kids, let's get out. It's like a big nature reserve. It's exactly what it is. Simply stunning. So many people come to us and say that the filming in no way captured the beautiful full colours of the water and I would agree with that. It changes from the most beautiful blues to turquoise greens and I think it's one of the reasons why I fell in love with this place. So many people over the years have asked us how did we find it? 
where we had been out with the local agent and he had taken us to a lot of places that were simply not adequate. And I said to him, please, there must be somewhere near water. And he sort of turned around and looked at me and said, there's no water in Spain. What, you know, there's no lakes in Spain. But then he had a brainwave and he remembered someone had sent him on the internet a piece of land that was for sale by the Torremendo Lake. And he bought us around the corner and it had just been raining and there was this rainbow, a ta-da moment over the lake. And I said, wow, if that's where the piece of land is, I would buy it. He did a little bit of investigation. It was, so we did. And that's as simple as that. So how much land have you got? We've got approximately seven and a half acres. Oh, that's nice. Uh, we've kind of divided the, the land up when we cut it into sort of various shapes and, and sizes for different uses. This chunk here is where the house is going to I be, guess, obviously. I guess, <laughs> yeah. Just in front of it, we've got uh, sort of two landings which we want to use to build two swimming pools. And then we move up a level where we've got that black plastic yeah. and that's where we're going to build our tennis court. So what's it going to look like, your place? What are you building? <laughs> what a great question. <laughs> um, very difficult to describe, really. We've, we, we've stolen ideas from sort of different concepts, really. We actually started planning this three years ago, and we've worked so hard that we didn't let ourselves actually even think about it. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, we're out here, and we're going to have to start thinking about it. So you've caught us literally on the hop, really. But you have a very unusual ground plan, by the looks of it. Yes, it, it is. We, we've kind of stolen the shape. Um, from hexagons. They are giant hexagons all pieced together. Well, the shape is going to encompass the views, and I think that is going to be exciting. Despite the fact they've started building, Jen and Derek are still worryingly fuzzy about the design of this place. But structurally, they do know what they want. They're creating a super villa that's part of an extraordinary family complex, including a tennis court and an Olympic-sized swimming pool. The house will not sit quietly in its setting, but will dominate it. An unusual angular roof will sit on top of four hexagonal open-plan rooms. The two west-facing sitting rooms will have full views over the lake, and behind these will be the dining room and kitchen. In the centre of the house, a full-height stairwell will lead to five first-floor bedrooms, or with ensuite bathrooms. Jen and Derek's own suite will contain a generous dressing room and bathroom. Each bedroom will have access to one of two sweeping verandas that will stretch around the front and rear of the house and be shaded by the overhanging roof. Here, they'll be able to really enjoy this magnificent view. The house with land, pools and tennis court is budgeted to cost £400,000. Jen and Derek have worked non-stop for the past 10 years to make this possible. And although they've only agreed the basic structural plans, they feel they want to get on and build because they want to start their new life as soon as they can. And who made the decision, really, then, to come here? Me, yeah. No, definitely. It no. could have been anywhere in the world, to be honest with no, you. I made the decision to come to Spain. Yeah, exactly. But she made the decision for us to do it now. And coming here at this time, it's the right time to actually plough back the time and investment into the kids. the kids. And that's literally the reason why we've done it. So there's a lot riding on this house, isn't there? I mean, it's, I it's there a is. major project yeah. in its own right. Yeah. But it also represents something much, much bigger for that's you. Right. It's not just a building. It's a culmination of 10 years of hard work that will hopefully home, yeah. give us an opportunity to invest back into our family. But why build? I mean, why not just, you know, buy an apartment or a villa by the beach? I want it to be our, it's our dream home. Everything about it, ideally, is, is going to be from us. And that's, that's why we're doing yeah. it. Because it's something that we can say that we've done and achieved. Jen and Derek are excited by their vision and their enthusiasm is really infectious. The foundations are in, but I think they're not quite ready to build. The drawings for this place have no details on them. Derek's also had to return to London to run their business, a mini market and florist in Wimbledon, which they still haven't sold. He's relying on the sale of their shop 
to pay for the bill. Hoping the MEP, yeah, you know, the theory is one thing, the practical and the reality is, is something different. You go home at night and the house is empty, uh, and, and then you get up in the morning and, and you just think, well, what have I got to look forward to today? You know, there's no wife to kiss good morning, there's no kids to have an argument with, it's, you know, so it is, it's quite lonely. In Spain, Jen's become a single mum, left on her own to care for the girls and register them for local schools. Come on, let's go in. At the moment, I'm rushing, doing the school run, basically. That's all I've been done in Spain, is basically drop one, go and fetch another one. I don't even know the date. The days go past yet. It goes so quickly, I don't even know what the day is. While Derek and Jen are overwhelmed by the practical difficulties of their lives, the Spanish builders are carrying on regardless and are casting the entire ground floor slab in concrete. These foundations will determine the overall layout of the building. To be honest with you, I've never been here while they're here. I don't know much about the technical side, but it looks like something exciting is happening. Jen and Derek's build is being project managed by a local contractor who they met when they bought the land, and Hel Jimenez. Unfortunately, he doesn't speak any English. Bon, uh, guapa, you know, beautiful. Yeah, stupendo, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Obviously, there's a language barrier, so it's a bit difficult. <laughs> With a rudimentary understanding of both Spanish and civil engineering, Jen's site reports that she phones in to Derek are um, somewhat sketchy. So I've just stopped the video there because if there's one part of this whole TV program that I felt misrepresented me, it would be this. This was take three. And what happened is they wanted to film me giving a site report to Derek on the phone. They did the first take. Apparently it wasn't good enough because the sound of the concrete mixer was drowning out the audio. They asked me to do it a second time. The phone was going in and out, in and out, and I was walking around too much trying to get a good signal to speak to Derek. So again, but it wasn't good enough. By the time the third take came around, I was absolutely fed up. I had to go and get Eden and Jenna from school, drive to Creviente, from Creviente to Alicante, or it could have been the other way around, drive to Alicante, that's right, and then go and get Eden by five o'clock. And then the baby was crying as well. As you can see, Lindsay started to cry. Um, so it was just, there's a, there's a thing, there's a thing, or there's a, I can't even remember what I said, but I was really under a lot of stress at that point, And I just really wanted to be in the car going on the way to get my kids. And I just felt that they really made me look like uh, out of control, um, dizzy blonde that Derek had to sell everything and come rescue me because I was just clearly overwhelmed and couldn't know what didn't know what to do because didn't have any technical expertise and of course you know I just couldn't um, you know relay a very simple sort of on-site you know report really and that 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 to me felt really really if I could say chauvinistic <laughs> Actually, I would say any woman would really sort of go, mm, here I am on my own with the kids, you know, doing everything. Um, of course, yes, my I'm not going to lie, my Spanish was rudimentary. That was fine. And of course, it would have been helpful to have your husband there. Why wouldn't it be? But I just think in the context and the way they um, sort of set, set it up was quite, um, I personally felt um, embarrassed and slighted in a way so not very very happy that I was portrayed in that manner especially by the third take had they done the first take I probably wouldn't have been as unhappy because it would have been a lot more relaxed it would have been a lot more coherent um, but yes so you'll see now after this what actually um, I said um, bearing in mind as I say take three um, uh, after this we'll leave it at that um, this is 
a whole program, but it is naturally divided into four by the adverts. So this is the first series in one of four. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll try and get something that doesn't wobble so much. I let my equipment, I don't really have equipment, but I'll try and get a little stand. But um, maybe you've just got a little bit more of a clearer picture of what happened. And there'll be lots more photos and videos next time of the current house, because obviously this was just the beginning. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Yeah, a big machine, a concrete mixer. And they've got a crane to take it over. I must go now, okay. I've got to go and fetch Jenna from school and baby's crying. Although this phase of construction is going well, the eccentric way in which Jen and Derek are approaching this build worries me. If they're already so removed from the process, how on earth are they going to get what they want from this project? Derek needs to sell his business and get over here.